Moi. I would like to start uh, the second chapter of this uh, series of documentaries called uh, Suomelle, saying thank you to the viewers for the unexpected success of the first uh, episode called uh, Thinking Linear. They have reached uh, almost 2000 views between the three languages that has been published in over 30 countries. In fact, uh, I will dedicate a few seconds to show some pictures related to this uh, strange world lines uh, mystery that show them in Canada and Iceland. The first picture on the screen presents one of these uh, massive lines on the territory of uh, north of Quebec, east uh, of Canada, taken from the airplane by the Canadian researcher Verbaholic that, by the way, have contributed enormously to the creation of this uh, series of uh, videos, not only with images, but with uh, help in the narrative, having knowledge of multiple languages. And he's not the only person that have contributed uh, in this way. Also, an amazing United States friend called uh, Brad Storm have contributed uh, in the same way. On the screen uh, at this moment, you can appreciate one of her pictures. But uh, let's continue with this world lines enigma. The next two pictures show the exact same line formation found uh, all over the Lapland province of Finland, but in images that I personally took in my recent expedition to Iceland, where, by the way, they are appearing with fields from under the glacier melting, raising uh, many questions about this theory of an ancient ice age that lasts for millions of years. But I will talk about this topic in a future episode, entirely dedicated to this convenient old theory called the Ice Age. But let's start now presenting the second chapter of Suomelle, starting uh, actually with the reason of the publication of this video, which is to try to find the real historical position of Finland as always being presented to us as a lonely piece of ice without uh, ancient history and importance, and at the contrary, having countries which their place in history was blown out of proportion, and to go deep into the origins of this ancient society and language. So let's start reading how the official historical version of the Finnish language is presented to us by the mainstream scholar and the main research engine uh, in the web. If we type in internet uh, Finnish language, we can read Classification Finnish is a member of the Finnic group of the Uralic family of languages. The Finnic group also include Estonian and a few minority of languages spoken around the Baltic Sea. The map uh, shown on the screen represents the areas covered by the Finnish language. And as we can see, there is a minority of speakers also located in the area of the city of Alta, and a large part uh, of north of Norway, all the way to the Koba Peninsula of Russia, by the way, even to these days. So let's go check what they tell us about the Uralic group of languages. The Uralic languages constitute a long family of some 38 languages, spoken by approximately 25 million people. So very interesting that it is clearly written 38 languages, not dialects. I mean, 25 million speak those languages that have the same primordial roots as the Finnish language. So if we calculate the entire population of Finland, based on the end of May 2016 statistic, we can observe that it is around 5,500,000 people. And if we add to that number, the entire Estonian population, which is according to statistic published the 1st of January 2016, approximately 1,300,000, we have an important uh, number of around 7 million people. And we are not taking in consideration all of the other minority of speakers. So it makes the Finnic group largely one of the biggest speakers of the Uralic languages in number, being over a quarter of it. In fact, if we continue reading, we can see that the Uralic languages with the most native speakers are Hungarian, Finnish and Estonian. So let's go investigate this supposed link between Finnish and Hungarian, keeping in mind that in recent years many articles had appeared on international newspapers and magazines discrediting the hypothesis 
of a connection between Hungarian and Uralic group of languages. Classification. Hungarian is a member of the Uralic uh, language family. Linguistic connection between Hungarian and other Uralic languages were noticed in the 1670s, and the family itself, then called Finno-Ugric, was established in 1717. Though the classification of Hungarian as a Uralic, Finno-Ugric, rather than Turkic language, continued to be a matter of impassionate political controversy throughout the 18th into the 19th century. So also in this uh, classification, we can read that the connection with the Uralic languages is rather an old theory than actually a proved study. But I will read you one more quote to make understand to the listener that if the Hungarian is excluded from uh, this family of languages, the Finnic languages would largely be the most spoken in the prehistoric Urals mountain area. It was thought at first that Finnic and Ugric, Finno Ugric, were closer to each other than the Samoyed branch of the family, but this position is currently considered questionable. So, if we eliminate uh, from the original 25 million that speak Uralic languages, the 10 million Hungarian, according to statistics of 2016, the Finnic would be suddenly half of the Uralic language in speakers. I will ask uh, to the listener to go study the various other branches of the Uralic languages, because in this video I can present only a short uh, overview of the amazing studies available to us, like for example the writing system and etc. But I will read you just one more quote of the extended information which is given to us throughout the uh, internet. The quote uh, continues, the name Uralic derived from the fact that area where the languages are spoken spread on both sides of the Urals mountain. Therefore, the original homeland, Urheimat, is commonly hypothesized to lie in the vicinity of the Urals. So let's try to find out this hypothetic homeland in the Urals mountain areas. The source of the images and uh, most of the information about the structure that I will present you in the next few minutes come from the New Earth channel and the amazing new site created by them, uh, megalith.org, that to me is largely the best collection of ancient archaeological sites throughout the internet. And after the publication of this uh, chapter of Suomelle, I will present on my YouTube channel uh, Life Creation two of them videos about the megaliths of Urals and from all over the planet. So let's move our research for answer to the unexplored and mysterious area of Urals. The map on the screen shows the location on the planet of this uh, mountain chain. I will now present to the viewers some photographs of some recent uh, discoveries and less known to the public archaeological sites throughout the mountains of Ural, most of them located in very remote areas. I will ask uh, the listener to keep in mind at this point what we just have learned about the origin of the Finnish language, which point exactly in this specific region of the world. In these first uh, few images, we can appreciate a clear modification of the stones from its original natural formation, with uh, way too many right angles and smooth surfaces, along with clear machine tool marks present in areas where no ancient civilization has ever been recorded. Especially in this particular photograph, the machine tool mark is extremely evident. But let's continue with the next archaeological discovery that, to me, is the most impressive and enigmatic, the present of an enormous black pyramid. As we can observe uh, on the picture, an entrance was found uh, under it. And I repeat that uh, the area where this structure lies is extremely remote, with many days of expedition by walk in this uh, unpopulated forest uh, to reach it. Again, no known civilization has been ever recorded in the area. For more detail about this astonishing site, 
watch the documentary of the new world channel that i will present right after this episode on my youtube channel about uh, the urals megalith but let's start um, to go with order making a list of the megalithic site found throughout the urals mountain let's begin with a recently discovered site if i'm not mistaken was discovered in autumn 2013 its name is gornaya shoria as we can see on the images the megalithic stones that are part of this wall are enormous making them most probably the largest megalithic stones ever discovered the perfection uh, of the way that they fit together challenge any construction technology available to us even to these days the idea that the primitive people were able to cut transport and lift such gigantic stones is completely disconnected from reality as we can see on this picture between the blocks not even a knife could be inserted and in this other photograph we can appreciate the perfection of the stone masonry. In the next couple of pictures, we can see the gigantic size of the megalithic block that form the structure. The idea that prehistoric people with simple tools have built such an incredible complex, as I said earlier, is completely disconnected from reality. And that the evolution theory presented to us by so-called historians making us the most advanced human species ever exist in history is highly questionable i will show you to give credit uh, to my conclusion another astonishing uh, structure recently discovered in brazil this wall is composed of stone block long up to 30 meters and who knows the tones that could weight each one of these bricks but the question are what happened to it how did it got destroyed? The stones that once were forming this structure, they are scattered all over around the wall. Which force could have break it apart? But the main point is that to recreate such giant wall as the one found in Gornaria Shoria, we would need heavy machinery of gigantic size to like the one shown on the screen. And the idea that primitive people with chicken bones and ropes have built them is ridiculous. Also the wall of Gornaria Shoria, something very impressive happened, like in the case of the Brazilian war. There are massive stone brings scattered all around the structure. And the question rises again, what happened to this place? Some unknown force have destroyed it throwing these stones many meters away from their original position. Can you please just look at the wall showing these images? How did they put those stones on top of each other to form such monstrous wall? Even today we would have problem to achieve the same result. My father is an important uh, architect and since young age uh, I've seen with my own eyes building massive industrial complexes but something of this size defines logic. As we can see in these pictures, the stones look uh, if uh, melted on the spot, raising the question of uh, if those blocks were quarried from natural rock or made of some sort of geopolymer or manufactured material. The stone look as if liquefied at some point uh, during the construction or the destruction and it's not uh, only a phenomenon of this area all over the globe uh, where there's megalithic structure we can observe this situation like uh, for example in this picture from Kazakhstan where the rocks really look melted just imagine the temperature that is needed to have such result very peculiar structures and tunnels are found all over the Urals mountain area well, most probably where those primitive people were munching bananas, I guess. Also in um, the area of Gornaria Shoria, as in all of the structure found in the Urals and all over the world, we can observe some very strange holes, very similar, if not identical, to those found in various locations throughout uh, Finland, called uh, Idenkirnut, 
or pothole. On the screen, you can see the comparison between the one found all over the Urals mountain and the one present in Finland. But the point is that they are found also in desertic areas like Kazakhstan or tropical areas like Brazil. By the way, the one in Kazakhstan, they are also on vertical cliff. The original theory about their formation is given to ice melting and making the stones rolling as crazy and grounding the edges of the rocks, forming larger and larger holes. But due to their presence in warm areas of the planet and cliff, make it a very questionable theory. But I will not talk about this subject in this episode, because I will dedicate an entire chapter of this uh, series of documentaries about strange structures and geological formation throughout the Finnish landscape. But now let's continue our research for this original hypothesized homeland of the Finnish language, examining uh, another archaeological site found in the Urals. This one is called uh, Chortovoi Gorodice. Again, we can observe enormous blocks and megalithic, megaliths scattered around uh, a bit everywhere. But in this particular picture, we can see some sort of bending material between the stones that form the structure. It will be interesting to know what actually is. Look if it's holding the stones together, like some sort of concrete. And also in this site, the wall is baffling. How did those primitive people put the stone blocks one on top of each other? But what interests me the most about this wall is the peculiar composition uh, itself. Can you see how the stones look like uh, pancakes? And what it called my attention is the similarity with uh, an ancient structure found in Finland precisely in the Lapland province. The stones used in this Finnish site are very similar to those found in Chortovoi Gorodice. And not only, we can find the same stone wall style in many other archaeological sites throughout the world. These are found, for example, in Japan and France, and the similarity is obvious. But I will not talk about this Finnish wall yet because I will include it in the future episode about strange structure found all over Finland. But let's continue. The next site is called Arakuski Shihan. I have to say that this wall is my favorite for many reasons. To start, it is absolutely astonishing how gigantic is the structure. Please look at the size of it and of the blocks that it is composed completely define logic. Second of all, it goes on and on for kilometers and kilometers, and it is situated in an area where, again, no ancient civilization has ever been recorded in history. What it could have been uh, its purpose? Third, can you see those holes again? They are exactly like the one that I've shown you earlier, and identical to those found in Finland. But in this case, if just for a few seconds we take in consideration the theory of the ice making roll the stone to form this pothole or kirnut, a question rises along. Where does the supposed rolling stone came from, being the holes on top of the wall? The answer would be from the sky, which actually is uh, one of the theory that I personally have about them formation. But as I said, uh, this it will be one of the topic of a future episode uh, entirely dedicated to Finland archaeological structure and strange uh, geological formation. Let's now move our research to the next site. It's called uh, Lake Chartash. Again, we can observe a massive uh, block forming walls, machine tool marks, our potholes, the same wall formation as the one shown uh, earlier in Lapland, Finland. So until now, uh, nothing new. Again, no known civilization recorded in history. But in this archaeological site, we can appreciate some strange tool marks present on the stones. And as you can see, they are identical to these tool marks found in enormous quantity in Finland. 
but the one in Finland, they are found in largely poblated areas and very remote corners of the forest, even in stones that are almost completely under the earth. But I will talk about this subject in the future. For the moment, let's investigate the last archaeological site and what actually have been discovered there. I will start telling to the listener what actually the local tribes of the Urals mountain say about all of these places that I present until now and how they were built. They talk about a race of giants that have uh, lived in those area long time ago and that they are the responsible of the construction of those megalithic structures. I know that it sounds like some sort of fantastic uh, legend or an account or some fairy tale that come out from a local mythological book, but actually the idea of an ancient race of giants is widely spread uh, phenomenon found in every continent and in every corner of the globe. The images that you can appreciate uh, on the screen are of uh, two very mysterious sites. They are called uh, Arkaim and Sintashta. They are located in the southern part of the Urals mountain. Apart from the staggering pattern that those ancient places are composed of, the interesting uh, discovery was of some very peculiar elongated skulls that they were found on this particular spot. And uh, I take the occasion to show you a tooth that had been discovered in another location of the Urals that uh, without any doubt is that of a human, but is over three times larger than a human tooth. In this uh, other photograph, we can see a very strange sign on a stone also found in the area of the mountains of uh, Ural. And I don't have to say what it actually looked to me, because it is pretty obvious that if it's not uh, a natural formation, so the legend of the local tribe starts suddenly to make sense. And as, a, as I said uh, earlier, is a worldwide belief that in some point of our so-called evolution, we were walking uh, on this earth along with a race of giant people. The picture appearing on the screen are showing the same cranial deformation, but in another side of the world. These are the Paracas skulls of Peru. And what is interesting about these particular skulls is that some of them have actually still conserved the hair on their heads, and that once analyzed, they show up with Caucasian DNA. So, how does Caucasian people end up as royal families of the Incas Empire, thousands of kilometers and an entire ocean separating the two lands? But it gets trickier. Peru and Russia are not the only two countries to have discovered elongated skulls. This is for, from Malta, in the Mediterranean Sea. And these are from Chile and the Patagonia of Argentina. But we can go in many countries and find out that they have their own cranial deformity on ancient skulls. Like in this case, where one of these skulls was well preserved and discovered in Tasmania. I think that it is exposed in a museum in Germany. And it is not only in mummies that we can find them. The Egyptian have dedicated many statues to their various royal families. And this is the result. They had elongated skulls. In this particular geroglyph, we can observe that the emperors are peculiarly tall, almost giant, and everybody have an elongated skull. But let's continue searching for proof that can tell us that the account of the local tribe of the Urals are not fantasies of some crazy wild society, but they are actually based on fact. The next few articles are from United States and not only local newspaper write about skeletons of gigantic dimension, but also the New York Times have his own publication describing the discovery of bones 
of a race of giants. If somebody is uh, interested in studying this worldwide phenomenon, I recommend the, the documentaries of Jim Vieira. But you can find uh, thousands of uh, videos about this topic. But I will just read you a last quote. The eyes of that extinct species of giant, whose bones fill the mound of America, have gazed on Niagara as our eyes do now. Abraham Lincoln, 1848. Well, at this point, uh, the purpose of this uh, documentary is very clear. There is much more behind the Finnic group uh, of languages than what we think. And suddenly Finland starts to grow in importance uh, in this pyramid of historical ancient events. In the next uh, episode, we will try to understand why the main historical institutions books and schools present to us as the only truth a view of the historical events concerning the Finnish recent history that are at least fishy and in the other side they obscure fact of enormous importance that will make us understand that Finland in the last few centuries was much more important than what we are led to believe. But I will let you again on a note of suspense, and I will not add anything else about the topics of the next episode. Thanks for watching and listening. I will end this chapter with a list of islands that help me to put together some of the pieces of this puzzle called life.